Hi guys, welcome back to my channel or hello if you're new. Uh, my name is Nisha and I am a former labor and delivery nurse, current stay at home mom. In today's video, we're gonna talk about breastfeeding essentials. Disclaimer before we hop into this video, I am a registered nurse, but none of this is medical advice. Consult your pediatrician or your provider for all medical information. Duh. So the very first thing before we get into products is the most essential breastfeeding tool out there, and that is a quality lactation consultant. Even though I was a labor and delivery nurse and I myself educated women on breastfeeding techniques and all those things, I still went to a lactation consultant because they are so amazing. They are a wealth of knowledge. All the things that I already knew were reiterated. Um, and some things I didn't know, even though I have done education before, I didn't know some of the stuff that she told me. And I was very confident going into the hospital that I had everything that I needed to succeed uh, while breastfeeding. And I had someone I could call anytime, email, text message, if I had any questions. Although hospitals do have um, certified lactation consultants, they're not always available. Most hospitals don't have them there 24 seven. And if you deliver at 1 AM and you're breastfeeding and you have questions or you're stressed out or whatever, they're not there. Whereas a lactation consultant that you hire on your own will be at your disposal whenever. And so that's really handy to have. Um, I feel like my success in breastfeeding was uh, prepared ahead of time and then also over prepared with the lactation consultant and I have a wonderful support system as well. So just before going into the hospital, I feel like that's the most important thing. And then you can go from there. If you're into reading instead of watching videos, I did write a blog post about this and I'll leave it linked in the description or you can just go to nishalovesit.blog and you can read it there. Everything I talk about will be linked in the description or over on the blog, so make sure you check it out. On top of having a lactation consultant, also this book i'll put it right here is by anna may gaskin who is the queen of midwifery um she actually hails from summertown tennessee which is right down the road from me and i read all of her books before i became a labor delivery nurse and continue to read them to freshen up on knowledge but this book it's Ina may's guide to breastfeeding and it is full of all kinds of information um, that will make you feel more comfortable, especially in those early weeks where you feel like maybe your baby's not eating enough, you're not producing enough, all those things that stress you out in the beginning. She has such good information in this book and your lactation consultant can pile up even more good education on top of that. It's also available on Audible, so there's that too. Unless you're one of the few women out there who have the luxury of just breastfeeding, on the breast and you're never gonna pump, then the next few things are pretty important. Obviously, pumps. I'm by no means an expert on pumps. I have experimented though to the point where I feel comfortable telling you that these pumps that I'm gonna talk about are good. Uh, so I've had several different pumps because I think for most women who do breastfeed and pump for a long period of time, will go through several different pumps if they are able to. Um, insurance should pay for your first pump and maybe even another one, it depends on your insurance. But the very first pump that I had true success with and I felt comfortable with and I saw um, my milk letdown respond to was surprisingly this one. This is a manual pump. Um, this is the Medela. There are some, so many manual pumps out there, but this is the one that I loved. The very important thing is the flange size. You need to make sure that it fits you properly. If it hurts, it doesn't fit you properly. If you're not having a good letdown, it may not fit you properly. So experiment with different flange sizes to what suits you best. Uh, this one comes with the bottles. Like I said, I'll have everything linked in the blog or in the description. Something that I didn't know going in was that this pump has two pumping actions. So you can do it like this, which is how you start. This is the stimulation. So you'll do short, quick pumps for a few minutes till your letdown starts. And then you'll switch to this, which is a longer, more strong pumps action. And then you'll do that until your session is over. Undo the pumping bottle, pour it into the <coughs> bottle that your baby's going to eat out of 
And then this little thing right here, I've learned that if you pull it back a little bit, there's milk saved up in the reservoir here and every little drop matters. And so I always pull that back and get the rest of it out. And then I rinse it, set it out to dry and it's ready for the next time. This also is a super cheap pump. It's like 20 something dollars and it's easy to travel with because you don't need cords, batteries, you don't need to plug it in and recharge it. It's just, it's ready to go whenever you're ready to go. It does come apart pretty easily so you can store it in your diaper bag while you're on the go. So after that, I graduated to um, a different Medela pump, which was on clearance and that should have told me something. It was on clearance because it was discontinued. And so then I had to switch over to this pump, which I am very happy with. So this is the Medela Freestyle Flex. Um, it's extremely small. It weighs less than a pound. Um, it is rechargeable and it has a touch screen right here. So you just turn it on on the side and then it comes on. Whoa, that's really bright. And then you hit the, obviously you'll have everything plugged in. So it comes with the tubing and then two of these, which are the attachments. And then you just hit the play button. It comes on. You can increase the strength by hitting the plus sign or decrease it by hitting the subtraction sign. Um, it will run like this, let me pause it, for a few minutes and then it for quick stimulation, again, to promote letdown, and then it'll switch over to the regular setting. And then again, you can increase it or decrease it if you want to. And if you don't want the stimulation, which I strongly encourage, then you just hit the little droplet and it'll change to the next setting. And then it has a little battery emblem at the top that tells you if it's charged enough or if you need to plug it in. Another cool thing about this is that it comes with an app. I don't use the app and you don't have to, but it is there for those people who are interested in using it. Um, you can download it on, for free on iPhone or Android and it's got all kinds of cool stuff on it, but I don't mess with any of that. I just pump and I go, but it is really cool. It is expensive, but all pumps are expensive. And for me, the smaller ones, as opposed to the big hospital grade ones, I just prefer. Or you, you may be one of those people who want a big hospital grade one, and that's totally fine. Pumps are very, it's an individual thing. It, each mom will find the pump that she wants. It, just because this worked for me doesn't mean it'll work for you and vice versa. It's just something you have to experiment with and figure out what your best options are and just go from there. Another thing I want to mention about this pump though, which is almost the main selling point to me, is the flanges have this really soft silicone material that makes it super comfortable as opposed to all the other ones I've tried, which weren't like painful, but it wasn't like nice and cushy and soft. This is, it's so nice. And I just thought that was a really nice touch. The size I use is the 21 millimeter. But like I said, every woman's built differently. You have to figure out what size fits you best and promotes milk flow best. The next thing is a hands-free nursing bra. You can find these anywhere. I have linked the one I have down below. You can get them at Target. You can get them at Bye Bye Baby. You can get them at Walmart now. Pretty much anywhere. But if you're gonna pump, you're gonna want one of these because you want your hands to be free while you're sitting there with a pump attached to you. Otherwise, you're gonna be bored to tears because you have to hold them and you can do anything with your hands. You're just kind of stuck there. So with the hands-free, bra you can play on your phone you can read a book you can i don't know pick your nose whatever you want to do you can take a nap sitting up in your recliner if you want to because you don't have to hold it which is fantastic the next thing are bottles um if you're going to be a breastfeeding mother but you want your baby to have a bottle eventually you really need to introduce a bottle at around the three to four week mark. Um, that's something that lactation consultants have told me several times. I've read on the internet and it worked for us. Um, our bottles that we use are the glass advent bottles. Um, we went for glass because we try to cut down and not use plastic as much as we can. Um, 
Although these Medela pump bottles are plastic, immediately after I pump, I pour it into the glass bottles, mm -hmm. store them in the fridge. Glass bottles that we got uh, from Target come with two different sizes and some pacifiers as well. I know having a glass bottle kind of sounds scary, but I've dropped these several times and they've not broken yet. They're really durable. It's very thick glass. It's not like a drinking glass. They're very, very sturdy, similar to a mason jar thickness, and I haven't had any problems with them breaking so far. Another very, very important thing is a water bottle. One that you will actually drink from. I have hydro flasks. I have like seven of them because I drink water constantly from those. Um, if I had it in a glass, it would just sit there. But the Hydro Flask, I get the ones with the straw lid and I can drink two or three of those a day without any problem. And if you're breastfeeding, you absolutely need to drink water. It is a must. You have to drink water or where's the milk gonna come from? And on top of that, you need to get your electrolytes in. These are the electrolytes that I use. They are called Re-Light and they're by Redmond's Real Salt. They have two different flavors, lemon lime and mixed berry. I prefer the lemon lime. They also have an unflavored one. Um, I drink probably two liters a day and I put the electrolytes in um, my morning cup of water and my night cup of water. And that seems to be doing the trick for me. The thing about these electrolytes that I like the most is that they have way more salt in them than any other electrolyte. And it's quality salt too, um, has minerals in it. It also has dehydrated coconut water, which um, if you go onto any breastfeeding blog, you're gonna read about coconut water. Uh, I don't know about you, but I think coconut water tastes like butt and I'm not interested in drinking it. So this gives me the benefits of coconut water without me having to taste that nasty stuff. And so I'm pretty psyched about that. Um, salt and electrolytes are super important, especially while you're breastfeeding, but really for anybody, these are great. There's a discount code, I'll put it right here and the link will be in the description as well as on my blog. I can't say enough good things about these. Like They taste amazing. I literally can open them up because they don't have a lot of citric acid, I can just like lick my finger and just eat them. Sometimes I just eat them like a pixie stick, like I'll get, <laughs> they're so good. I'll get a spoon and literally stick my spoon in there, drop it in my mouth and then chug water. You don't have to put these in water. It's fine. It's just electrolytes. So it's kind of like a pixie stick. Just a little, just a little sourness, just enough. Don't forget to use the discount code because it will give you free shipping and a discount. There are 50 servings in this, so it's a good amount. Um, these are pretty economical compared to a lot of them, especially the keto ones because these don't have any sugar in them. Thank God. So the sweetener they use is Stevia, super safe to use, and I love it. Another important nursing or breastfeeding essential is vitamin D3. Um, when you were discharged from the hospital, you may have been educated on giving your baby vitamin D3 drops. Uh, I take enough vitamin D that it comes through my milk supply. I will post um, Dr. Berry's video in the description that he did uh, all about this and how the body works and the study off of PubMed if you're interested in going and doing your due diligence and finding out if this is true, which it is. That's, so I don't give Beckett vitamin D drops. He gets the vitamin D from my breast milk. I take vitamin D as a supplement every day. I take five to 10,000 international units every other day. So some days I do 5,000, some days I do 10,000, but I always take it. And it also give as much sunlight as possible, but I always supplement because vitamin D is super, super essential for babies and for adults. So you gotta make sure you're getting the vitamin D3 in, it's very important. The ones that I have linked in the description or over on my blog, um, there, I'll put a picture right here. They are in coconut oil, which is important for me because I don't partake of like canola oil and stuff like that if I don't have to. So, <laughs> he's mad. I'm not ignoring my child, he's with his grandparents. So these are great because it's in coconut oil, which is an oil that I'm fine with and uh, is actually really good for your health. Now we're gonna talk about 
nipples. Uh, <laughs> nipple care is very important, especially in the first few weeks of breastfeeding. Um, I never had any issues. In the first few days after I was back from the hospital, they got a little bit raw, but that was it. I never had cracking, bleeding, no muss, no fuss, nothing. I applied Mother's Love Nipple Balm. You can find it at Target, Walmart, online, Amazon. You can pretty much find it anywhere. There's a different brands and they're all pretty much okay. This is the best ingredient one that I found and this is the one that my midwife recommended and my lactation consultant recommended. Um, and I put it on after every single nursing session and I also put it on prior to pumping just to kind of moisturize and then I would pump. Totally safe for the baby to be latched on after you've applied that. Just kind of let it set for a second and soak in because you want it to get into your skin. Otherwise, it's just defeating the purpose. It also makes for a really good chapstick, so there's that too. Nursing pads are pretty essential, especially in those first few weeks after your milk comes in. Um, I did leak. I use the bamboo ones because I don't like the throwaway kind. I hated those. Someone gifted me those, but I, I didn't like them. I gave them away. Um, the bamboo ones were soft and they're reusable. You just throw them in the wash as needed and put them in your bra. They worked well. And I mean, sometimes you're going to leak. It's just part of breastfeeding. I don't leak hardly ever anymore. I did today though, but I think it's because I bumped my electrolytes up and I'm pumping more. And so my supply has kind of went up and <laughs> I was down at the office today and I looked down and um, my left side of my shirt was just soaking wet. So it still happens every now and then, but it's fine. Another thing that I found to be super helpful and I still wear them today are great nursing tanks. So Target has this kind that's super supportive. It's built kind of like a sports bra, so it's a little tight. So if you don't like tight things, you might want to size up. I love them to be tight because um, it just feels more supportive. They come in several different colors. They have the little buckles right here that you just snap and pull down and then you snap them back when you're done. And they're cute. Um, you can wear them by themselves. You can wear them under t-shirts, under sweatshirts, under hoodies, under a flannel shirt, under whatever or you can just wear them as a tank top um they just come in handy i had about 10 of those because i literally wore them every single day for probably three months because they were comfortable they were supportive and they were easy to breastfeed in obviously you could just get a nursing bra but then you have to pull your shirt up and undo the nursing bra and then hold the t-shirt up and so it's just like it's easier if you just have the tank top because it does what a bra does without you having to lift anything up when you get ready to feed, especially if you're just sitting at home. And then also if you're in public and you need to breastfeed, if you wear the tank top underneath a t-shirt or something, when you do raise your t-shirt up and you unlatch, you still have pretty much all of your body covered. The only thing that's uncovered is your breast and your baby's head is gonna cover that. Which brings me to a nursing cover. I don't care if you cover up. I don't care if you don't cover up. Like that's your prerogative and it's none of my business as far as I'm concerned. Sometimes I cover up, sometimes I don't. It depends on where I am, what I'm doing, who I'm around, and the circumstances. So I do have one and this one, I'm telling you, if I could buy a blanket made out of this material, and if I can, you guys let me know, I would. It's by the brand Milk Snob and they come in so super cute patterns. They have Disney patterns. They have stripes, plain, polka dots, like whatever you want. And they are amazing. So they go over your head, just like a little, they have a hole in the top and then they just go over you and you just put the baby underneath you and you nurse. And I would always pull it off my shoulder so I could see down my shirt and see what he's doing down there and adjust stuff and like see if I'm squirting milk in something in his eye, like, you know, just what's going on down there. Um, and then they also double as a car seat cover. So when you take it off, you can put it on the car seat and cover the baby up if you don't want people, you know, sticking their finger in their face like people do, you know. Okay, so the next thing was a gift. These are pricey. Uh, I'm very grateful that one of our friends gifted us this particular item because it is pricey. It's a changing table, but it also weighs your baby. And here's why that's important for a breastfeeding mom. Uh, a lot of moms, especially those who pump and don't breastfeed at the breast, don't see uh, a lot of milk coming out and get concerned that they're not making enough milk and all that stuff. And even if you're not doing that, if you're just strictly skin to skin breastfeeding, 
even I was worried. Is he getting enough? Is it good? Is the supply good? Is it, you know, is everything okay? And so the thing that you have to look at to know if your supply is good isn't how much is getting pumped in the bottle or if your kid is fussy or, you know, whatever. That's not a good, that's not what matters. What matters is how much your baby is growing, how much he weighs, if he's lost weight, if he's gained weight, all that stuff. And so the hatch, um, changing table has an app on it too. So when you weigh the baby, it gets downloaded onto the app and you have a graph you can look at and see their pattern of growth. And if you need to send that to your pediatrician, you just screenshot it and send them an email and they can reassure you and you can feel reassured because if your baby's gaining weight, then you're doing your job. Everything is fine. Relax. And that really helped me to be able to see that he was growing and I didn't have to worry about anything because that is the only thing that matters when it comes to milk supply. Is your baby gaining weight? The answer is yes, you're doing fine. This doesn't necessarily have to do with breastfeeding, but it does. Um, I did baby carrying in the first few months because it was the only way I could get up and walk around. I had a really hard postpartum. Uh, I had a lot of pain. My terror was really bad. I had some injuries. It was just, it was a rough time. So to be able to hold him without, holding him was really helpful for me. So I used the Baby Catan um, and Breeze Baby Carrier. Uh, it comes in sizes, size down from what your normal t-shirt size would be because it's gonna get stretched out. Even if you wash it, it'll still start to get stretched out. Um, so I normally am a small, so I got an extra small. They come in a lot of cute colors. And instead of a lot of the baby carriers, you have to like do this tie thing. Like you don't have to do that. It goes on like a t-shirt over your head. And then you stick the baby in it and it, one tie and you're done. You're ready to go. And if your baby doesn't like it in the first few minutes, give them a, some time to settle in because it is very snug. But if you kind of just bounce them like this and walk around, they tend to just love it because if they're up next close to you, they can hear your heartbeat, that you're kind of in a swaddle. That's Beckett loved when I put him in that thing up until the point where he could move around and sit up and he didn't want to be snuggled anymore. He wanted to look at everything. He's a very nosy child and still is and probably always will be. But uh, that came in handy for me, especially if we were going out to eat or if we were walking around the store. You remember when we used to do that, walk around places with our kids? But he absolutely loved it. And he almost always slept the entire time we were anywhere. Even if we were there for two or three hours, he would sleep the whole time until I got him out and put him in the car seat and changed his diaper. So that was always a win for me. A few more little things, uh, milk storage bags, if you're wanting to build a stash, they're easy to find, they're cheap. I don't really think any brand's better than the other, just get whatever one that you wanna get. Or the Lannison ones are pretty cheap. Um, you just, they're all pretty much created equal. Just figure out which brand you like the most. Uh, a cool thing to do is if you seal them really well and lay them flat in the freezer like this, that saves room when you tilt them back up for storage. Another thing is uh, belly balm or some kind of good moisturizer for your breasts and for, you know, for your belly or whatever. But your skin kind of really itches when your milk starts to come in and you don't want to scratch it because that's just bad for your skin. So put some good moisturizer. I use jojoba oil or coconut oil because I don't have to worry about additives being in there. And I just, that's what I used and it worked really well. Here's my last helpful hint. Um, it's kind of more of a life hack than an essential. But so one thing I always struggled with was remembering what breast I had fed off of last time. So I put a hairband on whatever wrist was the one I needed to start on next time. So if I started on my right breast this time, then I would put the hairband on the left wrist. So I would start on the left boob for the next time and vice versa. And that's a really easy way for you to keep up with it because you can just look down and be like, okay, this one. And that's pretty cool. That, I mean, that's so simple, but someone told me that and I was like, why didn't I think that? That's such a simple solution and it worked for me like a charm. Okay guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to hit that thumb, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell to get notifications on all my new videos. Make sure to check out my blog, Facebook, Instagram, all that good stuff. I'd love for you to share this video on Facebook, uh, email, text message. Just send it to somebody who you think might 
be interested in this video. And yeah, I'll see you in the next one. Love you, Magnet.